Hello and welcome to The Restorers. The Restorers is a richly themed medium weight game for two to five players ages 14 and up that plays in about an hour and a half. In it, you will be a restorer of paintings on canvas who works for a large museum. You and your fellow competitors are all trying to show that you've got what it takes to be the next director of the department. Can you juggle restoring paintings, sending the paintings you restore to the galleries, networking, increasing your knowledge, and grabbing high-profile assignments? All of these gain you prestige, and prestige is what will get you that sweet, sweet parking spot near the rear entrance. You have only a week to prove yourself, so good luck. What you see here is the game setup and ready to play. I won't spend time on setup except to explain these damaged paintings. A damaged painting is a painting card plus an incident card. If the incident card says clean, that's all. If it says paint or mend, add a damage mask. These indicate which areas of the painting are damaged and need to be repaired. The flow of play mimics a regular day. A full round of turns is an hour and eight hours is a day. During a day, you'll have plenty of opportunities to score prestige points, which is how you'll win the game mainly through restoring paintings and collecting plum assignments. At the end of an eight hour day, you'll send your pawns home and do some upkeep. You'll also have another opportunity to score points through having sent paintings to the galleries during your day. Play continues in this fashion until the end of the game is triggered by one of two things. One, the last spot in the galleries is filled, or two, the director visits an event that will occur in either the fifth or sixth day. After some final scoring, the person with the most prestige wins. At its heart, a turn in the restorers is move and then take one action. Movement is simple. Travel one, two, or three rooms clockwise. Some rooms have action spaces. Those are these ovals, or if you're in a five-person game, we add these pentagons. If a room has action spaces, you have to land on an available, non-occupied action space. If a room doesn't have an action space, as is the case with some rooms, for instance this one, you just place your pawn in the room. Where you land your pawn is super important because this determines what actions are available to you. Different rooms afford different kinds of actions, so let's take a look at how that works. Only in the three studio spaces, Studio A, Studio M, and the private studios, can you actively restore damaged paintings. You can clean paintings. Paintings get dirty through neglect, you'll add varnish, a variety of reasons. In the restores, it's quickly dealt with. Land on a space with this icon. Add two of your cubes from your general pool to the grid of the painting. And this painting is now finished. Almost. It still needs to be vetted, but more on that later. To repaint a damaged painting, land on a space with this icon. The masks show which areas are damaged and need to be repainted. For these paintings, you must have on your palette the color that matches the visible squares of the grid. As long as you have the paint on your palette, you can paint up to the number of squares indicated on the icon. Just take a cube from your general pool and place it on the square. Be sure to subtract the paint you use from your palette. By the way, some paintings may call for black or white paint, and these are freely available. No need to spend paint from your palette to restore these areas, but you may paint either white or black on a turn, not both. Canvas can rot, tear, be punctured. If a painting needs to be mended, you must fix the canvas first, then paint. The process is actually exactly the same as repainting, with one important addition. Because the damage is greater and the repair is more time consuming, you get a bonus when you restore a painting needing mending. This means that in addition to putting cubes on the grid, you put extra cubes outside of the grid. If you mend with tape, meaning that you land it on this icon, you have one extra cube per grid square that you mend. If you reweave the canvas, meaning that you land it on this microscope icon, you get two extra cubes per grid square. All right, so we've been talking about putting cubes on cards when you clean, when you paint, when you mend. Why do we care about cubes on cards? Because cubes on the cards translates into you moving your scoring cube along the track. And where that happens is during the vetting process. Once all of the damage on a painting has been addressed, 
for a dirty painting, two cubes on the grid, for a work with damaged paint or canvas, all of the visible squares on the grid are filled in. It must be vetted before the restoration is considered a success. As soon as you complete a restoration, you may, as a free action, roll dice. Two for cleaning, three for painting, four for mending. If any die is unique, you have succeeded. But before we leave their studios, here's what you need to know about paint on your palette. In this game, as in real life, paint is a finite resource. If you're doing a restoration and you don't have enough of a particular color on your palette, it's time to load your palette. The person who is taking the action does so by landing on a space with this icon and rolling all four dice. Yellow gives you yellow paint, blue is blue, red is red, and white tells you how many mixes you may take. You'll remember from grade scroll that blue plus red equals purple. This and other formulas are represented on your palette. I use one blue and one red to make two purple, that's one mix. I use two purple and two green to make four slate, that's also one mix. So you get paint and mixes from rolling the dice. When one player loads their palette, all other players also automatically get one mix. And you can trade for paint. Whenever a, pa a player loads their palette, all players may trade anything on their palette, paint, favor cubes, expertise cubes, which we'll get to later, and even trade the mix to which they're entitled. Loading your palette won't get you prestige, but it allows you to repaint, amend, and these do give you prestige. I've been saying that you have to land on an action space to take one of these, uh, one of these painting mending actions. That's true in studios A and M. However, you'll notice that in the private studios, there are no icons. In these private studios, you can actually just do anything you can do in a regular public studio, with one exception. The museum's only expensive electron microscope is in these public spaces. So you can do anything except reweave canvas in your private studios. You just do it at a, the slowest rate. Once a painting has been successfully vetted, it's ready to be moved to the galleries. Moving paintings is one of the two kinds of actions you can take in the offices. The other is to use your influence. Influence is wielded through the favor cubes you've been collecting while aiding in painting restorations. You can use your influence to determine what facets of the collection that the museum magazine will next spotlight. If you have the most paintings with a spotlighted feature, you will win prestige points. Another way you can use influence is to enter the event raffle. These two rows of cards represent reputation enhancing events happening in the first row today and in the second row tomorrow. When using influence in the offices, place favorite cubes on any event you are interested in. Once a day, all entries go in the bag, a winner is pulled out at random, and the winner gets the event. You'll note that some of these cards don't have entries on them. That's because they are not events, they are potential friends. They give you the advantage printed on the card, plus you earn points for having collected friends at Game In, with more friends equaling more points. Earlier, I said that if a room has an action space, you have to land on it, and otherwise, if it doesn't, you just land in the room. While this is generally true, the offices are an exception to this. You'll notice that instead of being bounded by a solid line, the action spaces here are bound by a dotted line. This means that any number of people can land in the room, but only one can land on the action space and take the room's special action, which is to move a painting that has been finished from the studios to the galleries and use any amount of influence for any purpose you wish. As a restorer, you are both an artisan and a scholar, which means you'll be spending some time in the library. When you study in the library, the expertise you gain there can be used directly on painting as a non-hands-on way of aiding restoration, or you can save them on your palette for later to influence die rolls at the rate of plus or minus one number per cube. They say you have to get along to get ahead, and that's certainly true in this game. Sometimes, as a part of networking, you're going to want to go to curatorial to find out what the curator wants to hang on the walls. When you end your turn in curatorial, draw two exhibition plans for the bag, choose one, and return the other one to the bag. This is now a private goal. It scores at the very end of the game, and you can use it during the game to guide your choices and what paintings to concentrate on. 
The one room we haven't yet gone over is storage. Basically, when you are ready to bring out a new painting to be worked on, go to storage and assess one. You assemble it pretty much like we did at the beginning of the video with some additions. In the name of providing some context for all of this information, here are a few moments of some actual gameplay. I will go to storage with my 10. I will use the preparator card, which allows me to choose from the entire deck. That is a nice ability. What's with me rolling ones? Oh, this is horrible. Zarb. You got a lot of paint, though. Uh, kind of. And I get a mix for free. Can I give you some stuff for your mix? No, I need my mix. <laughs> I'm going to use my mix to put some tan on my palette. I can't take a six because I have two. I can't take a six because I have two. I can take the three red. It's not good. And one mix? <laughs> one mix is awful. It's horrible. All right, oh, so. Uh, I'm going to use my nine o'clock to go to Studio A, where I'm going to paint. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to paint one single dollop of tan. Dollop. But it's enough to finish that painting. Mm -hmm. And it is a paint job, so I roll three dice. Mm -hmm. And they're unique. So I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12 points. Because of the three. Mm -hmm. you get and one, you get two, six. Three, and four, five, six. And I get five back as favors. Thank goodness I needed some. So you get the curator's pet project. Okay. But you are not in the running for an interview with Arts in America. I am. And I get it. Oh, nice. So that's four prestige for me. And there's an opportunity to restore a board member's painting. And I get that one too. Nice. And that gets me three prestige. So that was lunch. That was very eventful. It was. It's a lot Lots happened happen at that lunch. Yeah. All right. These come down. Let's see what's coming tomorrow. Well, y'all, in the end, Ethan beat me by two. Count them, two points. So it was close. But he kind of snuck up on me at the end there with uh, points for having a lot of friends for completing uh, private goals, and for a clever placement of paintings in the galleries. And that's the restorers. Not every single detail, but the heart of it. For the details, I hope you'll take a look at the rule book. I've worked hard to make that not only clear, but visually really interesting. And in any case, Thank you so much for taking a look at this video and I look forward to your feedback.